and hey YouTube evil tomato here and I hope you all are doing well I hope you are safe keep up the fight and today on bullshit that is not happening we are talking about our lovely friend from the Daily Wire Mr. Matt Walsh he recently was having a little hearing about, you know, trans rights and if people should transition and all that. And he got completely bodied by the uh, Democrats at this meeting. And then he put out this video, um, let's see. Oh, damn, a while ago. I've been sleeping on this one. Okay, I'm a little late to the party. But more recently, he came at some other trans creators for, um, you know, calling him out on his BS. So today, we are going to dive on into it, hear what good old Maddie has to say, and see if he is right or wrong. Spoilers ahead, he is very wrong. But let's dive on in. Yesterday I had the opportunity to testify at a House committee hearing to voice my support for legislation banning the castration and mutilation of children in Tennessee. Now okay, number one thing I gotta say, he has to always keep up with the same old lie that they're castrating and mutilating little kids, which they are not. If you can, all of the stuff I found was through a quick Google search. And I will tell you, there are standards of care for trans people and also the most a child can do is socially transition. Which for you sissies that know, who know little about trans people, what that means is they can change their name they can change their pronouns and change the way they present in their dress. No medical intervention is happening at a young age. So keep that in mind with, because he's going to keep on rebuttaling the same point, and I'm getting quite tired of having to point out the same thing over and over and over. No. I've uh, addressed school boards in the past, as you know, but this was my first time in front of any kind of legislative committee, so it was an uh, interesting learning experience, kind of like my own schoolhouse rock sort of uh, experience. And one of the key difference, differences here is that in my school board speeches, I've spoken out against policies and measures that the boards were wanting to put into place or, or, or had already put into place. Yes, because, you know, you care so much about children, don't you, Mr. Walsh? No, you care about pushing your agenda. It's okay for those of you that don't know much about, you know, public speaking and all that. What he does is he reiterates popular conservative talking points and he fear mongers to put the most fear in people as possible. So, Bear that in mind with everything he says, and we will slowly try to debunk everything he has to say because, you know, he's such a bright individual. Individual. In this case, however, I was speaking in favor of a bill that the majority of the legislature has already expressed support for. So I didn't need to convince them of what they already believe or urge them to do what they're already going to do, but rather my plan was simply to add my voice of support as a citizen of the state. Now, you may be understandably concerned based on that description that my appearance in front of this committee must have been rather boring and lacking the kind of fireworks that you might expect and hope for. Well, allow me to allay those fears because fortunately for you, there were a, a few Democrats in the room who, though on the losing side of this issue, were still determined to use my appearance as an opportunity to... No, they bodied you, my dude. You got... Body. They brought up some stuff that you're so ashamed of, but I still believe he believes in. But we'll go and get into that if he even shows that. If not, um, 
I know a whole bunch of other left-leaning content creators have pulled all that up for you, so I'm not going to try to beat that dead horse too bad, but you know, when someone as unoriginal as this guy right here, who, you know, can't come up with new talking points, I kind of have to read, we have to reiterate the same old points. Try and score some points with their own base. So after I delivered my brief remarks and all the other witnesses, there were three others on the anti-mutilation side and four on the pro-mutilation side. They had, they had their turns also to, uh, to speak. And then the lawmakers on the committee had the chance to ask us questions. And the first question came from a Republican who had a very fair and relevant query about the oft-repeated claim, which we also heard from other witnesses uh, during the testimonies, that medically affirming, quote unquote, trans-identified youth is necessary to decrease their suicide rate. And because this is the thing that got get everything kicked off, I want to play this clip for you. It's a little bit long, but um, it's also, it's, uh, it's an important point, too. So here's my answer to his question. Just a quick question for you. We've heard in the news last week and even today that it's pro-life to vote against this bill. We've heard that um, suicides are prevalent. And uh, suicide has impacted my family, so I'm sensitive when I hear something like that. I, I, I've, I've read some of the stuff that you've done, and I was wondering, can you speak to the statistics of, of uh, mental health and suicidal tendencies for the people who have gone through transition or for people who have not? In your studies, from what I've read, can you, can you speak to that? Mr. Sure. Sure. You're recognized. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, the claim that uh, you know, doing the chemical castration drugs or surgery or hormonal intervention, the claim that this prevents suicide or uh, has uh, positive psychological effects down the line is utterly, totally baseless. Um, okay. Right there. He's claiming that, you know, gender-affirming care does not help the trans person and that it's completely baseless. But... With a little quick Google search, we can go right here to, this is um, from the Mental Health Association of Canada, and let's just see, stressor, do, 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 do. let me find the exact quote for you guys, man. Oh look, right here under It'd be the second paragraph in, it talks about how when you affirm a trans person's gender, you lower the risk of suicide, and lack of support increases that risk. But we have no real evidence that that exists. Um, I'm looking at the evidence right here, buddy. Um, can we have a source, Mr. Walsh? please no okay moving on there are no credible long-term studies that bear that out and one of the reasons for that is that there couldn't possibly be any credible long-term studies because we've never done this to kids on this scale ever before in history so this current uh, shall we say crop of children they are the guinea pigs this is this is all experience no um Trans healthcare has existed for a long time, and so have trans people, but you're going to keep on denying that fact because it suits your agenda. Experimental. We're sort of trying it out on them to see if it works. Um, now, they have attempted a few times to do studies, and the interesting thing is that the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, WPATH, which is a radical far-left pro-trans organization, Okay, so that he wants to bring up the war path. Um, let's see. Hmm, they're recognized by, okay, let's just go to the awards in history. Huh, it sure seems like they're um, not accredited. Um, they've been, been, um, they've been heavily around since 2009. Granted, granted, you know, most trans healthcare is kind of new, but there are studies that go into it. 
and at this point he is just projecting the thought that you know this is all new stuff and it's scary and it's going to hurt our kids when it's not and that's not even happening but you know he he has to find some way to rally up his base they commissioned a study to try to prove that um that hormones and puberty blockers uh, uh, decrease suicide rates among uh, trans uh, trans identified youth and even in their own study they found that they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't prove it they couldn't make that link because it's oh they couldn't make that link really buddy um look at this we have a whole study from 1972 to 2017 showing that for trans people who transition, it greatly improves their quality of life and lowers their depression and almost fully alleviates their gender dysphoria. It's almost like you did zero research towards knowing about this. But moving on. And, and don't, don't worry, worry, we're not watching this whole video today. There's just this little section right about this. Because then he goes off on some other stuff on the, you know, he goes on other tangents and all that. And that's just too long. And I don't got the brain power to deal with that. So we're just going to focus on the main thing at hand, proving him wrong on his talking points against trans people. It's just not possible to do. The other thing I would mention too is that you know the 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 number of trans identified youth has skyrocketed in recent years we're talking about exponential 10x 20x growth just huge numbers have of, of, of uh, have, have increased and what we hear from the pro trans side is that uh, well this is not a social contagion it's just that you know there's always been this many trans people it's just that they were not in an affirming uh, environment before in history and so they couldn't come out and now for the first time trans people uh, have, have the ability to live their truth so to speak yes because at certain points in history and still in some places being trans would get you killed but just like how in the world when the stigma when the social and when the social and societal stigma of being left-handed went down guess what more people initially came out as left-handed people and then it balanced out the same thing is happening with trans people most of us have spent all of our lives hiding the fact of who we are but now the world is getting a tiny bit better these there's certain people and groups that are having major pushback because they're mad that we exist and that um, you know we're very loud and vocal about the fact that hey we are here and there's nothing you can do about it you can attack us and all that but it's not going to change the fact that we are trans it's the same thing in the gay rights movement where the where where it, it you can't put someone through some therapy and all of a sudden they're not gay or they're not trans so he's just beating a dead horse at this point and i hope the whole internet sees how dumb this cuck is well if that's the case and there have always been these sort of like millions of trans people and if it's also true that if we don't affirm them that it would cause them to commit suicide, then we should be able to look back in history and find just this unbroken, incredible epidemic of children mysteriously killing themselves because they weren't being affirmed as trans. And what you find is that that didn't exist. I mean, the, the, the youth suicide rate has increased exponentially alongside trans affirmation. So trans affirmation causes the suicide rate, not the reason the death rate has gone up is because people like you constantly attack us for existing and try to deny us basic human rights and because of that some trans people want to take their lives. I was close to doing, doing that when I was younger. 
for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I am trans. I am a trans VTuber. I don't like to show my face because of doxing. But, yes, there was a point where I was about to self-harm myself because of the fact that I was trans and I had, I felt like there was no hope. And for any young eggs out there, it, you know, it may seem rough right now, but it can always get better. Just keep that in mind. I love you. I care for you all. And I wish you the best and happy life. And you are valid. Not the other way around. Last thing I'll note is that um, the suicide rate among trans identified people is, is sky high. It remains sky high. All the data shows this. It remains sky high even after surgery. And in fact, in the most reliable data that we have, it's uh, years after surgery when suicidality is the highest for trans identified people. No, it is not. The reason why it is, it seems like that is because you are, people like you do so much to make a trans person's life harder that that's all, that's the only option we see. It's also why some people detransition because the price of living as their true selves is too high they cannot find a job they cannot find housing they can be denied even going to the grocery store i had one time because i'm trans i went into a gas station and i was refused service because of who i am and we also have this nice little study right over here that talks about is yeah Let me let's see. Look at this. We have right here a 95%. We have a 95% reduction in self harm rate in transitioned trans people compared to the 51% that do hurt themselves because they are trans, but yet there are studies that look at this hmm seems a little sus that's the reality now so you see all that I make a number of claims and arguments in that answer just as I did in my initial remarks yes you make claims and arguments but I don't really see a source um, do you have any sources let me um, You have a lot of plugs for your stuff, but yeah, you, I can't believe he's still using that tag for real, the whole what is a woman, because he's still confused, probably because he's never really met a woman. Uh, he's so fucking stupid but moving on that the democrats on the panel had the opportunity to refute if indeed i was wrong about anything i said and can be refuted then they had a chance to do it but 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 they couldn't refute it they had nothing to say which as we've learned about democrats will certainly not stop them from talking so the next question or what pretended to be a question came from a greasy little hack named caleb hammer who rather than discuss the issue at hand instead decided to try and smear me with that um, Media Matters hit piece from my time as a shock jock morning host 15 years ago. Um, what does that have to do with anything? What, what did he think he would accomplish with? What it has to do is the fact that you believe that a 16-year-old girl is okay 
to get married and get pregnant by a man, but they can't make decisions for themselves. I'm just saying, age consent is 18 for that. For, you know, your, your big thing that age of consent should be 18 for anything trans, well, why not for any type of marriage? Oh yeah, I forgot. He doesn't believe in consent. He believes that, you know, women should just do what they're told because, you know, he's that type of sm small energy human being, you know? He's the type that he cannot do, he could not keep a woman unless he is able to fully control them because if, that, if his wife were to get with a real man, he would lose her. But, you know, moving on, moving this, on. This, well, we'll find out. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I found it interesting, one of our uh, um, people uh, testified today that they uh, had their gender affirming surgery at 16. And I know uh, you in former comments mentioned uh, this uh, on your blog. At about 16, you're an adult who's mature and can make decisions. Uh, you're that at 16. I don't care what anybody says. Even going so far as to say, you know, 16 people, uh, when you're 16, you should be married and, uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Um, so I'm curious if 16 is... Uh, a uh, an adult in your view uh, why does this bill have uh, the uh, minor de defined as 18 uh, well, that's, uh, yeah that's that's a hit piece you took from media matters uh, it's not just a hit piece took from media matters it's also a piece taken from um, from recent tweets of this guy but you know he's going to gloss over all that because you know he can never say anything wrong because, you know, he's so great because he's a white straight male. Uh, from something when I was a, a radio host uh, 13, 14 years ago in my early 20s. Uh, it's also not an accurate reflection of what I actually said. Um, I was talking about uh, the fact that people tended to marry young historically, and that's all that that was about. Um, how does that relate to, the, to this subject? Just curious of your definition of, of if you feel like people are adults at 16 should well, uh, people are adults is... at 18 uh, but actually their your your brain is not fully developed until you're 25 so we should be having a conversation about whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people at 18 but certainly before 18 it's it's absurd I mean do you do you do you think that a 16 year old can meaningfully consent to having their body parts removed a, that's not happening, but in rare, cir rare circumstances where the gender dysphoria is so bad. B, to be able to get any trans-affirming surgeries, you must go through at least two to three years of counseling, a year on hormones, before you can even be recommended for any gender-affirming surgeries, but yet again, Mr. Walsh believes that he knows everything and he doesn't need to look anything up because he's got such a big brain. Ugh, I swear that there, uh, there has to be like just two brain cells up there just fighting for control. Do, do you? No? We do not. Yeah, we asked the questions. It's not. <laughs> you just totally got owned. Oh, just no. We asked questions here, buddy. The four does not recognize you, so you should just be quiet. It's uh, okay. Representative Hammer. You are recognized. So, <clears throat> that was one gloriously awkward silence. Uh, even more so for those of us in the room. Actually, you can't see it from that camera angle in the clip exactly, but Caleb sat back away from the microphone when I asked him that question, and he kind of looked off to the side, almost like he was trying to pretend he didn't hear the question. It was, it, was a, it was a bizarre scene, but not so bizarre when you consider that I had asked a question that Caleb Hemmer simply could not answer. He obviously couldn't say no, that 16-year-olds can't consent to having body parts removed, because then he'd be agreeing with me and with the legislation. He doesn't want to do that. But he also didn't want to come out and say yes, that 16-year-olds can consent, because that sounds horrific and insane when said out loud, and it puts him in the position of having to 
explicitly defend a totally indefensible proposition. You'll notice that leftists, they often find themselves in this kind of situation. They, they, they hold many views that they cannot say out loud. Uh, yes, we can. It's just you like to twist and misconstrue everything that is said to fit your narrative. But, but on that, I think we've done enough today. My brain really hurts, and I thank you all for stopping by and hearing me ramble about good old Mr. Walsh. I'm going to go edit now, and hopefully this will be out in a couple days. Thank you. Goodbye.